Hello, welcome in, and today is Friday the 2nd of October 2020, my name's Mike Martin. Now, today's exercise, I'm going to dis be dismantling one of my very, very first EID hard drives that I ever purchased. Uh, there was actually nothing wrong with it, but we don't use EID in on it, was only, it was only a 300 and... It was a... Sorry, 250 gigs EID hard drive. If you don't know what I mean by EID hard drive, that was the connection. That was how it was connected to your PC. Unlike today's where we're using SATA connections, uh, this green thing you can see is a jumper, and that used to tell the drive if it was a, a master, slave drive, master or slave drive. They had three settings: master, slave, and what we call cable select. Uh, and when you use cable select, you could have two drives on the same ribbon because in them days you used a ribbon, not 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 a SATA cable like we do now, uh, and you could have two drives on it, and usually. The furthest one away would be the master, and the second one would be your would be your slave drive, as we'd call it then, your slave drive. Or you could have a, a DVD on one end and your hard drive on the other end if you only have one cable, depending on the case uh, and the configuration of your of your PC, depending on how it was. So anyway, that was an EE hard drive. That's how you connected. So that first one there was your. That was your, your that's your power connector that's where your power used to be connected and that was your your ribbon cable your ribbon cable went and that carried all the data through to and from your pc like i said if you had more than one hard drive on your cable you could either use uh, the jumper for each drive so you'd set one as your master one as your slave um this was so if say you had uh, drives of two different sizes you may have had one drive as you say your, for your windows operating system um, so it may be maybe the smaller drive so you might have something like this which as I say was a, a 250 gig you could have probably have that with windows on it and then maybe you could have a, a harder drive say 500 gigs then because I don't, I don't think one terabytes were in then um, so you could have a 500 gig that I say for you for storing your data so you tell tell the, 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 the PC, PC which one was which or you could use a cable select, and by using the cable select, what it then do? It automatically detects it. Uh, it will detect which one was the master, and which one was a slave, and that was by the distance on the, on the ribbon. And that was usually, I say, the very top one was either your master or your slave. But then again, it could be telling the manufacturer, manufacturer how they decided. But it was standard, so that was that was it. So that's an e old my old EIE drive, EIEE drive, if I can get my words out. That I used to have. So I'm going to actually dismantle it to show you what's inside. Now, I'm going to tell you a disclaimer here right now. Do not, under any circumstances, you let anyone do this to your PC. And no technician that comes to your PC to repair your PC should even want to attempt to do this. If they do, then they're not a proper PC because they shouldn't. These drives are, all, uh, are manufactured and opened and repaired Oh, when, not even repaired really. They, when you send them away for data recovery, they're done in a clean environment condition. They're done in like a, a very sterile condition. In other words, it's like a room where it, it is well ventilated, all air is extracted out, the play, whole place is like full of filters. All the technician wear white clothing, uh, mask, hats to stop any hair falling in, uh, gloves so they don't handle parts, so not oils from the skin or anything gets on the drive. And these drives, uh, when you send them away for, for data recovery, uh, uh, are disassembled in such an environment, yeah, um, and it's very critical. So if you, like this now, if this was a brand new drive, say, and something went wrong, say it wouldn't read all right, or you could hear it clicking, and they're brand new, and say you thought, oh, I'll see if I can see what it is, and you rip this label like this and just try and try to send it back, you would void the warranty. They would not honour it because that label's been tampered with, yeah. This is just where I've been messing about with it before. That label of tampering. with it. You do not, under, under any circumstances, open your own drives. Yeah? So don't let anyone do it, because they'll, they'll, if you've got any data problems, or hard drive problems, like it's, it's not clicking, or sometimes it boots, sometimes it won't, which is the sign of a failing hard drive, and you let anyone do this to your system, not only will you lose all your data, so if you've got valuable data, it's gone, but you also invalidate any warranty, and you've ruined your drive, it's totally ruined. Because there's heads in here um, that are held down by magnets. There's he also could hear my little dog then. Uh, there's heads in here uh, that are held down by a magnet. And once you open this drive, it's exposed to the elements. Once dust gets on it, that's it, it's gone. So, without further ado, I'm going to. Um, 
I'm going to show you actually what's inside one of these um, EID EID drives. What's inside a hard drive? When you say EID, because you know what it is inside a hard drive. So I'm going to show you what's inside one of these. How we go about snap? How we go about um, dismantling it? And what is what? First of all, you need to be. By the way, this even though this is this is beige, this is an anti, a proper this is a proper anti-static mat. But this is also like a heat mat for micro soldering, uh, and it's got its place. But I have this for, for little tasks like this. So there's actually three, six, seven. There's actually eight dry, eight screws. Well, they're not in screws. They're 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 um they're um I've got the name of these screws now. Um, the the little T eight T eight, the little T eight screws. There's actually eight of them. There's seven round the edges, so you've got three up there, three up there. That's six. One there, seven. And where this is lifted is the eighth one, and it's underneath that that big, that that uh, silver seal. And that silver seal there, that one there, that's a very important one. That one. It's slightly different. The head of it is slightly different from the rest of all the others. It's flat, so it's slightly recessed, and it's also what holds the arm, the read, the read right arms, in in position, in location, and in this corner here are two very powerful magnets, and I mean powerful. I don't, I don't mean some weak magnet you can look at that will fall apart. They are strong. They take some force to fries apart. There's only one screw holding the top one down. And then you have to prise that apart, and you get the actual arm out, and you'll actually see the, the, the platters. So let's get ahead. Let's get ahead and start. And I'll just adjust this camera. I've got another camera over here, uh, taking another angle. Taking another angle. Let's zoom in a bit there, so you can see. So we like to. Uh, So let's take these apart. So here we go. I did have some music on before, but obviously I don't want any uh, copyright strikes from YouTube. So I've had to turn it off. So I'm afraid we're working in silence. I'm listening out for the the patter of tiny feet, and it's not a baby. It's well, it is a baby. It's Millie, a little Jack Russell. But every now and then she likes to come upstairs to see what I'm doing. Just to make sure I'm still here. Because she's like that. Now, for some unknown reason, why is my magnet not holding me? This one's uh, remagnetizing. I think the magnet. Now you notice, you notice I'm putting these uh, seven in their own. If you wonder what I'm looking for, I've got a magnetizer around here somewhere. I don't know where I've put it. There it is. Um, I've got a magnetizer. There it is, my magnetizer. It helps to. There's a magnet in here, but it seems to be fading a bit. So I'll just give it up and down in there just to magnetize it, strengthen it slightly. I've been using this on other things, so obviously the magnetizer is wearing down a bit. So that's that, and then we've got this one. Okay, this is a six one. Now remember, once you've done something like this, any warranty on the drive is done. So if you've got a brand new drive and you've got a problem with it, don't let anyone say, oh, they can fix it and they try to do this for you. It's a no-no, right? It's a no-no because you null and void your warranty. You null and void your warranty and you've also ruined the drive. So any chance of date recovery is now gone. So once this is done, that's it, it's now gone. And there you have sitting in front of you are the platters. Yeah. And there's the read right head. And there's actually two platters in this, which you'll see in a minute when I take it out. And there is this here is a magnet, is a magnet, a top magnet, and there's another magnet underneath. And these little things here are dust filters that stop little particles of dust that gets into the drive from from getting onto the platters. And you see how the platters are perfectly smooth and shiny. Um, if there's any 
if you hear any clicking noises, you might see little spots on it. That's where the heads have been hitting. These heads, believe it or not, do not touch this batter. They don't touch. They run a very thin cushion of air, about about probably the, the, the width of a hair. They run, they run a cushion of air, the width of a hair. Hey, say that when you're drunk. Um, over the top of the platter and read and read the uh, the information, read the data that's on the drive. So now, um, we're going to try and remove. Say, try and remove because this one here is really, really. These magnet is really strong. Now I've got, got to get another screwdriver because. I'm another screwdriver because these magnets are so strong it's not that easy just to pull them away with your arm and they will flip back because they've actually got some little casing brackets on the edge and if it springs back and your fingers underneath it so I'll tell you now you'll know about it I'll tell you now you'll know about it so here we go so the screws out for the top magnet so I'll just keep kicking the camera the screws out for the top magnet and uh, now I'm going to try and remove the top magnet. And as you'll see, it's a very strong magnet. And I mean strong. There you go. That's the top magnet. And see, see how strong it is? It's took the bit out of my driver. Look at that. There's the bit of my driver. And it's a bugger to pull off. Okay, so now what we've got sitting in front of us now, that's the read arm. And try to show you, there is, there is actually two platters. Uh, let me, there's actually two platters in there. Yeah. Well, if you wonder why I'm moving backwards and forwards, I've got two cameras. I've got another camera set up here at the back, back of me, uh, which is also recording, but it's recorded from a different angle, from a different angle. So I'm just trying to show you the, the, the best ways. There's actually two parts. You can just, I've got to, yeah, you can just see one under there and one above, and the arms go in between. But I'm going to take it off and you can have a look. So this is why you always say, where possible, put your OS system, your operating system, on a solid state drive. Because you don't have no moving parts. With these things, once they fail, recovery of any data becomes very hard. And if you think by putting recovery, if you think by putting recovery software on your drive to get it off will help, uh, think again, you're wrong. Because actually putting a recovery software on the drive that is that is fail or beginning to fail. If you hear your drives beginning to fail, starts to click, um, it's beginning to fail, then then uh, once you put recovery software on it, what actually happens is you start overwriting some of the data you might want to recover. Ideally, how it should work is that if you once you set up your PC, before you start putting data on it, once you've installed Windows and all the rest of it, you should then put recovery data on it. But trust me that you shouldn't have been having to put recovery data on it because it should do backups. The good thing is about Windows 10 now is it actually... It will force you to do um, um, backup history. It will do you to do file history, but it won't force you to. But it'll keep nagging you to do file history, and you should do it. You should purchase, um, like I do on my laptops downstairs. Um, in fact, on this, on my go-to PC here, which is this one, which is this one, this one. This is my go-to PC here. At the back of it, I've got a two terabyte. That's there is a two terabyte hard drive, and what's that doing? That's backing up my PC. This is backing up this PC all the time. So should I have a failure? So should I have a failure? I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. Oh, and there's the other camera that I'm recording to. There it is. I'm recording them. You see my finger moving on it there. That's my other camera. See my finger moving there over the drive. I'll see the camera records you. So when you see me moving backwards and forward, that's what I'm doing. I'm showing the other camera because I will, when I edit this, you'll have two sort of like angles of what I'm doing. Okay, so 
There's the drive. There's the arm. Now there's the other magnet. So that's the read right arm. So as you can as you can see on this arm, I'll demonstrate. Um, get as close up as possible. As you can see on this arm, that there is one knackered head. Um, in fact, all all the heads on this are now kaput. This drive is really very old. I've I've had this for years, um, and it failed. It was one of the first hard drive ever purchased when the size of hard drive started to increase, and because um, Windows was getting bigger, programs were getting bigger, we were demanding more space, um, you know, your little 16, 20 or 48 meg hard drive, what there was then, was quite inadequate, and then when gigabytes started to come out, in capacities that is, gigabytes in hard drive, not, not the motherboard, uh, the capacity of gigabytes started to come aboard, come out, then obviously, I mean, they were expensive at first, but then you wait till the price come down, and then you started picking them up. So this was one of the very first one that I've had. So I said it, it's been around for years. Um, the data on here is is mine. There's actually no data that sort of like on here that that that's important then because it was just it was just junk that I was messing around with then. Um, and and plus, I had the sense to transfer my files. I have the sense to transfer my files. Oh, my other camera's just died because I've got I've not got it plugged in. So that's the last of that stream. So anything else? Um, hang on. Well, actually, I've got another battery. Let me just put that in quickly. So should we charge them up again? Just put that in and right, okay. <clears throat> Good enough shout with that. I don't think this battery is going to last a stream anyway, to be quite honest with you, on this one. I don't, I don't think this that's it could I don't think this battery is going to last a stream anyway, but uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So, where was I? Yeah. So as I say, the head on this to is totally kaput, uh, and this is why we always say be careful not to drop, not to drop or um, knock your PCs, especially when you've got hard drives, um, and you know where possible mount and flatten the PCs. You know you have seen some hard drives be mounted on each side. On the front stood up or you know all different angles of the pc depending on the size of pc and how it's constructed um we always try to say you know try and keep it flat as possible this is because if you do knock it you, you minimize the risk of damaging of damaging the, 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 the platter or damaging the heads the thing is now with most newer hard uh, drives that said they've got a lot more tolerance than probably these for first second generations hard drives um so they will take a lot more Oh, my little dog, my little Millie's just come up. Hello, Millie. She's just come up. My little Millie's just come up to see me. She's heard me chatting. She thought I'm chatting to somebody. Um, yeah, so um, the, um, the the capacities of hard drive, I say, varies. I've lost my train of thought then. Right, so what I was saying was, yeah, um, I had, this, I had this, the good sense and the fortune to actually save the data off here that I needed. Um, so all I need now is the old... Is the old um, is it the old XP or is it a 3. Point? I can't remember if it's XP or if it's a 3.1 version of Windows that's on there. It's a really old, let's say, as you can tell by it's the IBE. So that is that. That's the second magnet. That's down there. What I'm going to do now is remove the screws holding the platters in place. Now, like I say, this, this, now, this drive now is actually kaput. Even if, even if, say, I had millions of pounds and could afford it and send this off to a data recovery place. They probably could get the data off it, but what I'm saying is it, it cost that much. It, co it cost that much to do. And the thing was, because I've been handling it like I have been doing, and that, um, it's probably drastically reduced the, the chances. But like I say, there's nothing on here that I want. What I want to do is to show you what's inside a hard drive and why um the move from HDDs, though they still are relatively cheap, and that's why they're cheap, because they're trying to flog them up, uh, and move over to, to, to solid state drives. Solid state drives have no moving parts, they're just chips on a thing. Yeah. They're just chips on a, they're just chips, that's a solid, that's a solid state drive, they're just chips on a, on a circuit board, and that's it. There's no moving part, these can be shaped, dropped, you know what I mean? I'm not saying do it, but I'm just saying, um, the torrents of these far outweigh hard drives. 
hard drives still does play a part in today's society for some people uh, because because of the sheer size of the storage. But usually they don't contain OS on them, they'll just contain the data. The OS operating system will probably be on a solid state drive. Yeah. Or maybe say elastic capacity. So I mean they won't they won't use something like a they won't use something like a one terabyte drive or something for um the OS system. Um, they'll probably use something like a 500 gig for the OS system, uh, and then they'll use larger capacity drives. Uh, well, they'll probably say they'll probably use something like this and upwards. This is a 240 gig solid state drive. Ideally, I use these like for scratch drives and I've tried to recover data off drives that are failing before they've failed. I don't do this, I don't want to go anything like that. But um, if, if somebody suspects a drive's is failing, they'll call me quickly. Um, what I try to do, I, I try to lift as much data as I can onto these onto these drives, onto one of these drives, a scratch drive, um, uh, so we can then look at replacing replacing the damaged drive with an SSD drive and then transferring the data onto another drive, ideally another SSD drive, um, you know, or another mechanical drive that they can use, use use for storage, which is the way some people are going now. What they're doing is they're putting their, their hard drives, depending on the system, especially especially people with sort of like older systems, yeah, where they don't have the, the facilities for M.2 drives, uh, but they can actually move their operating system onto a solid state drive like this, and then probably keep, if they've got something like a one terabyte or, uh, you know, a, a, a two terabyte hard drive, something like that, they can then use that just for storage. Uh, and that that is probably a lot a lot better a lot more tolerant because uh, the thing is with hard drives with mechanical drives with the OS on it because of spinning up and spinning down that often when you start up and 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 start off your system it's more prone it's more prone to failure most PCs fail at startup you know you say oh well I was using it last night I switched I've come back in this morning and not all happened. That's when most PCs fail at startup because of the mechanical drive. It's a bit like starting your car engine in the cold. There's more stress. There's more stress on your car engine starting up than there is at any other time than when it's idling or running. So if you use a solid state drive, you reduce that risk. Um, if you've got mechanical drives, obviously everybody's uh, situation is different. Um, one of the one of the rule of thumb is to actually leave your system running, but then obviously. I know you're going to say, well, it's costing electricity and, you know, you've got to pay for electricity. Um, depending on the system, some systems, are, uh, mod more modern systems are now quite um, power efficient. They don't use so much power, say, maybe the old systems where they didn't have that power efficient. You've got um, power supply units, like the one I've got in here is an EVGA and it's a Gold Plus. Uh, and what, what that Gold Plus rating is, it's the wattage. It, it means it's the efficiency. Um, it's gold efficient, which means... Um, this this PSU in here has a fan on the back of it, and that fan hardly ever comes on. The only time it comes on is probably when I'm playing um, playing a game or doing some some video rendering, um, where the graphic cards and start to draw power while it's rendering, uh, and the fan may the fan may kick in just to cool it down a bit, and it, even then it doesn't stay on for long. So it's it's a very good um, the systems nowadays are very good at, at, at power efficiency. So you can actually leave them on. But obviously, if you don't want to, then it's probably wise if you've got a mechanical drive to swap it over to an SSD. Okay. So that being said, let's stop waffling. Platter out. This is the top platter. And you only will see. And in between the platter, you've got an actual ring here, separator ring. Then we've got. Top platter which I took out, let's see, separate ring. And what happens with these is that the arm, the, the disc sit between these arms like that, it reads right. This is actually the top arm. The reason why you've got another one here is because depending on the size, I say this is only a 320 gig hard drive. If say you got something like a 500 gig or a one terabyte, they may have more platters in them. Some 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 uh, hard drives have three, four platters in them. Uh, and 
And then what would happen there is that you'd have another arm on there. It would be manufactured. Obviously, it's done at manufacturing. It would be manufactured for the amount of arms that it needs. But as you can see, this one sits there. Yeah, like such. And what happens is you've got a, a head at the top and a head at the bottom. And it reads on, reads on right on both sides of the disc. Yeah. And um, the same again. See? So you've got... It sits in between there. That's a head and that's a head. And it reads and right on both sides of the disc. It's simultaneous. And if you look there, there's another set there. That's why it's split there. There's another set there. And that happens on the second, the bottom disc. That this there. That happens on the bottom disc as well. And that's where you get your passive from. And obviously, if you had another disc, this would have a head on this side. And that would read around again on this side, on this on this disc, top and bottom, if, if that was the case. That's why when you own that, you notice that this wasn't on the top because otherwise it wouldn't read, you wouldn't be able to read the data, you'd be missing one. So that's how it sits, and that's how it reads and writes your disc. So when you take that one out, it they would sit like that, yeah, and read and write both sides uh, while the passes are spinning. Uh, another thing about um, when you take these batteries out, another thing as well, what makes data recovery so expensive when you think you've been ripped off, is that you see what I've done here now? These batteries are totally out of, out of alignment because the platter is going a certain way, and I can't I can't show it on the I cannot show it you on this because the camera cannot pick it up. It's too fine. But there are actually some some parking marks. Where the where the heads park on the disc, yeah, and it's reflected. It's it's mirrored on both sides and on both discs, yeah. And on the back of your disc here is a controller board, and this tells it everything about this disc. It's got so how many platter it's got, how many hedges in the system, uh. And how it's lined up, and it knows exactly where it's parking stop. So if you just try to stick this back in now and assemble it, and think it'll work, it'll never work. Not in one million years. You'll be there for the rest of your life. Yeah, trying to fathom it out. It does not work as such. So that's what's inside. There's nothing else left there. That's just the bottom, the bottom magnet. That's just the bottom magnet. As you can see, the locating grooves there. So that sits like that. That these two these two feet here sits to these two cut out here. And that's what keeps that's what keeps that in check. Yeah? And that rotates into there. That, that's what moves it. As it gets the electrical current, it moves through. It moves through the The coil there, you can see the coil around the head, that gold thing, that's a coil there, and it reads it, it reads through it and everything. Oh look, I picked up, I picked up my screw. Yeah. And the data passes, the data passes through. There was actually um I did cut this off. There is a ribbon cable that runs here. It actually joins to here. You have to take this whole thing out together. But I actually cut it off just for demonstration purposes, as I say, it's knackered anyway, so it don't matter. But there's a ribbon. There's a ribbon that actually, as you can see, it comes up there. It would be connected. This would actually sit like this. When you have this open, it's actually connected to this. So you couldn't actually put it out. You have to take out all this as one unit. Yeah, with it connected because there's no actual way of disconnecting the ribbon. But um, uh, but that's how the the information is read, and those magnets do a wonderful job, and. I'm just trying to show you how strong those magnets are. Yeah. That's how strong those magnets are. Okay, guys. So that's what's inside a hard drive. So if you have... I see once you drop it inside there, you can't get it out again. If you have a... Um, in fact... If you have a, if you have a hard drive as with your OS on it, I would recommend. I would recommend uh, 
that you um, I would recommend that you actually transfer it onto a solid state drive and then use your use your mechanical drive if it's still in good nick and you still want to use it not wrong with that use it just for data storage and that way then when you boot up your system it doesn't it doesn't actually spin up till it's needed because it's only it's only for data storage so only your boot times off your ssd solid state drive will be so much faster you'll notice it straight away but so much quicker uh, and then actually accessing the accessing your data will will be slightly quicker as well because you're not actually going off both drives because you're not going off the same drive yeah you're not you're not booting off the same drive and storing to the same drive so your software is not having, having to work out oh which which bit is the boot drive which bit's the data drive and then obviously if corruption sets in that's when problems start because once if, if the OS becomes corrupted you can't access the data yeah there you go drive there you go guys that's internals oh I was going to stick that back on one that's the internals of an SSD now the Miller didn't just come up to have a look at me just to make sure I'm still here she came up because it is now 4.30 and it is now time for her afternoon walk and she's not daft and she's just reminding me that I've got to take her for a walk so so as I say as I keep repeating myself but I'm trying to get a point through and I hope you, you take it on board and understand why we suggest it and why we may saying it if you still got an S, uh, S, uh, a mechanical drive, and it's a large capacity of mechanical drive, and you see no reason, you see no reason to discard it when you can still use it for storage, then please do. But what I would say to you is, clone, use a cronus true image, clone that drive, yeah, remove. The OS, re remove the, the, the data from it. Yeah, remove the data from it. Store it on a on a separate area and then format the drive and just use it for data. What did I say then? Remove that drive. Remove the store. No. If you still got if you're still using a solid state drive. No, if you're still using a mechanical drive, which is just one drive with both your OS and your data on it, shift your data off it, get your data off it onto some other media, or or clone the depending on the size of it, clone that drive to a solid state drive. Yeah. Lift the data off your solid state drive and then put it on your mechanical drive and just use a mechanical drive for just data storage just for storing your data your photos nothing else yeah don't have the operating system running off it as well because if the operating system fails and while it, while it fails is that a register could become corrupted or anything um and whilst and whilst in most cases sometimes that can be recovered um you know when we're not too much difficulty there are going to be the other occasion there are going to be the exceptions where it is so far gone that maybe nothing but a clean install will get you back to normal and if your data's on there and you clean install it it means you wipe your data you can't get it back so so use a solid state drive well use solid state drive where possible that's it for everything that's the rule of thumb but if you can't get your OS onto a solid state drive and use your mechanical drive for data storage. That's what I'm trying to say all along. It's took about two hours just to say that stupid sentence, but there you go. So that's it guys. Um, hope you understand, hope you, get, hope you get the drift. Think about it carefully. Um, if you have any issues or you'd like me to do it for you, then just reach out to me. Yeah, just reach out to me. I'm not too expensive. Trust me, I'm not too expensive. Um, a task like that, so you're looking at about 40 quid. 
It's looking at about 40 quid, but that's that's not including any drive. So if you want me to, to supply the, 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 the solid state drive, then obviously then obviously you would have to add the, add the price of the solid, state, solid state drive to it. Or you can get your own solid state drive and I'll I'll do it at a fixed fee, but the fixed fee is 40 quid to do that for you. That's to clone 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 your system and um set you up so you've got your your mechanical drive as a date as a data drive. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye guys.